Home Park to see Division 2 leaders Plymouth Argyle face promotion rival Swindon. Plenty of talking points for our commentator, Martin D. Well, they may have lost their guiding light, but have they lost their sense of direction? This is Home Park's first taste of life without Paul Sturrock, but his legacy is all around. The team, of course, very much the one that the departing manager built, although caretaker boss Kevin Summerfield is forced to make a couple of changes this afternoon. Club skipper Paul Watton is restored to the centre of defence for the first time since November in place of the suspended Hasni Al Joffrey. And Tony Capaldi comes into midfield for the injured Ian Stonebridge. Swindon are also forced to make a change. Their Brazilian-born midfield player Stefani Migliaranzi is ruled out with an ankle injury. So 36-year-old Alan Reeves returns to the starting lineup. He's expected to slot into the centre of defence with Andy Gurney pushing up into midfield. Well, Swindon very much the form team in Division 2. The big question is, can they extend their 11-match unbeaten run at Fortress Home Park? Bristol City are still the only team to have beaten Argyle on their own patch this season. Only four others have managed to emerge from here with a point. A real test for both sides this afternoon, of course. Ten points the difference between them at the start of today's game. Victory for Argyle would surely put dreams of the championship beyond Swindon's reach. Another 1-2 with Capaldi. Norris with the cross in towards Michael Evans. Couldn't quite stretch enough for it. And it's the nearest we've seen from Argyle so far. David Norris doing most of the spade work. Mooney taking a bit of a tumble. That will be a free kick. Well, David Norris has caused a few problems in these early stages. Good cross in and just flicked away from Michael Evans. Good defending then from Alan Reeves. Launched long into the box towards Michael Evans. Keith is in there. So too is Norris. And well, eventually by Hayward. Paul Watton. Curled in towards Evans. Got up well for it. Norris trying to get in there, Marino Key, it's in, he's got it. Well, it seemed to take an age to roll past Reese Evans, and that's the opening goal. Norris making his presence felt, Marino Keith just getting a foot on it. Seemed to go underneath the defender, and beating Reese Evans. Well, that's his tenth of the season, Marino Keith. And what an important strike that could prove to be. There you go, Pulling it through for Howard. Parkin has made a run, he's onside, McCormick having to come up quickly, and Peter Gilbert got in there just ahead of Tommy Mooney. And the Argyle defence was opened up then. And Parkin broke through, he wasn't offside, he got the ball inside towards Tommy Mooney, and uh, Peter Gilbert just playing it away. It's Mooney just laying it back for Sammy Igo. Well, they've given him the nickname of the showman. And with shots like that, easy to see why. Well, he was on target against Brentford last weekend. Got the winner against them. Pretty close then. Well, Reeves getting it forward, straight to Peter Gilbert, though. Hollywood and Nichols are almost getting in each other's way then. David Norris, looking to drive one in, took a deflection, oh, Keith almost got the touch on it. And it almost fell then for Marino Keith. And it could have been number two. And David Norris cutting inside, let fly with the shot, the deflection almost falling for Marino Keith. The touch there would have been enough. Connolly in for Keith. Now David Norris making a run, he's got into a good position here. Save from Reese Evans. And he's caused all sorts of problems in this first half, David Norris. Breaking into the box once again then. And Swindon not really picking him up, he got into a good position for the shot. It was a good save from Reese Evans in the end. Goalkeeper getting down well and saving with his feet.
Holby again with the long throw. He's caused a few problems with that. Evans getting a little touch on it. Norris couldn't get the shot away this time. Now I go. He's got away from Watney, rather dived in. Of support. This is Howard. Parkin and Mooney in the middle, played in towards Sam Parkin. Parkin looking to get the shot in here. To the side netting. First time that uh, Sam Parkin has really threatened. And he's got 18 goals so far this season. And, uh, caused a problem or two then. Just got into a decent position. I think McCormick got a hand to it. Only for the corner. Coughlin with the header. And now Frio forward towards Lowndes. Away by Hayward. And De Gurney looking to set Mooney away. Martin had given him a yard or two then, and that came off Graham Coughlin. Could have gone anywhere, really. A good cross in from Tommy Mooney. And Coughlin getting a little pat on the head, as well he might. Did well. Put it out of the danger area. One of those where central defenders can be embarrassed sometimes. Could perhaps have gone in the net. Corner floated in underneath the bar and McCormick having to punch it. Now I go, looking to turn it back across. There's a whole host of bodies in there. Parkin is in there. Can't get anything on it, though. Was punched away from under his bar by McCormick. And then I go, turned it back in. Haywood was in there, Parkin was in there. So too, plenty of Argyle bodies as well, though. Only three at the back for Swindon at the moment. And that could cause a problem or two. Now, Lowndes was pulled back then by Andy Gurney. And I think he's going to go off, surely. It's a red card for Andy Gurney. Nathan Lowndes was the last attacker. Gurney, the last defender. And the referee's assistant spotting Andy Gurney, pulling him. And Gurney's having a go at the referee's assistant now. And being told he's going to get himself into more trouble if he's not careful. And Andy Gurney clearly not happy. Well, this was the incident. Gurney just getting himself into a bit of trouble. Now, is there a little tug on Lance then? I think there probably was. It was maybe the faintest of tugs. Maybe he was being fouled, but he did pull him back. And he was the last defender. And Swindon are down to ten men. Now, it looks as if it's going to be Tony Capaldi who will have a swing at this one. Capaldi left-footed, driven into David Dukes. And getting it away, but only at the expense of a throw. As the Argyle fans break into the greens are going up. Beginning to look a little that way. We've got some defending to do here. Gilbert, long ball up front for Evans to chase. Heywood has just given the ball straight to Rhys Evans, and that will be a free kick, which Mickey Evans wants to take quickly. Now, is that going to be count? It is! Michael Evans has got number two. Well, Swindon, really the architects of their own downfall then. And they must be absolutely apoplectic on the bench. Rhys Evans picked it up. That was a back pass. Michael Evans put it down, took the free kick, said thank you very much. His namesake may have got a hand to it, but he couldn't prevent Evans from scoring. And really, that will settle the issue. Some quick thinking from Michael Evans. Some rather... Idiotic play from his namesake, Reese Evans. Well, Evans just putting it down, saying, thank you very much, I'll have that one. And that's my 12th goal of the season. That'll do. Now, Brian Howard at the other end, good challenge from David Norris. Well, was it? Well... The referee's deciding that it's a free kick, and that was very, very close to being a penalty, I have to say. David Norris making the challenge. The contact was outside the box. The referee got it spot on. So now, I go lined up to take the free kick, driven into the box. It went right the way across, and I don't think it touched anybody. Well, that was a small miracle in itself. 
huge crowd of players as Sammy Igo thumped that one through. Oh, I don't think anybody got a touch on it. Still a little bit of defending to do. Igo with a cross in towards Mooney. And he's got it in at the second attempt. Tommy Mooney. Well, he went in where it hurt then. And Swindon have pulled one back. Well, it was a brave header to start with. Good save from Luke McCormick, but Mooney with the follow-up, forcing it over the line. And Luke McCormick will be disappointed to have conceded at such a late stage. You saw two teams on the pitch who, who deserve to be where they are in the league because while the football wasn't particularly enthralling, they, the commitment and will to win for the for the clubs, both Plymouth players and Swindon players, was fantastic. Now that second goal that really killed it off for you, slightly strange in in a lot of ways. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it was. I mean, I think you know, absolutely immense credit to Mickey Evans who, who was who, who thought so quickly to do what he did. Uh, and people have said in, in the dressing room regarding. Um, Evans, he said if he'd have just left it, it wouldn't have been a goal. If Reese hasn't hadn't made the dive and put it in the goal himself, it wouldn't have been a goal. But keepers are paid to make saves, and that's a reaction from a keeper. So it would have been very difficult for him to laugh at the, the taker, I think it was, I don't know who it was, and say, you know, you're stupid, you don't know the rules. So, I mean, that's the reaction I can live with. I can't live with the first mistake that put us in that situation. That was two two good players, Hayward and, and Evans, making uh, one, major, one major blunder. And, uh, it cost you games, and that's what's happened. It's cost us the game. That, that, that major blunder has cost us the game. So it's pretty much as you were at the top of Division 2. Bristol City and QPR both winning over the weekend. And Plymouth back in action against Peterborough on Tuesday. We'll have extended highlights in the West Country match at 11.30 that night. Coming up. Yeovil's West Country Derby goals that sent out a clear message to Division 3's high flyers. That plus Torquay, Exeter and Biddeford action after the break. Substitute scores a winner. 